Alright, hello everybody. This video I anticipate being a bit shorter than the other ones because I do have to go to work in a couple of hours. So because of that, I've picked out some cards that I really want to show off uh, now because I don't think the next video will be until tomorrow. Such cards involve General Grador, which I don't want to show until we finish talking about Nastroth. So back in closed beta, I remember Mod Merchant saying they playtested Nastroth at 3 gold, but it was a bit overpowered, it was really strong. I imagine, though, that was a long, long time ago in a galaxy where TD Double Jad didn't exist. I think creature decks have come a long way since Mod Merchant originally said that, and since this card was originally playtested at 3 gold. I think in the Chronicle that we know and love today, a 3 gold Nastroth is not only fine, but actually needed. I mentioned creature decks have come a long way, like people have figured out all of the different permutations and different things you can do and the potential that that has. With gold though, there's not really anything to discover. You, you pay for gold, you get the base attack, and that stayed the same since then. As a result, it's been a bit underwhelming ever since. So there's two reasons I made it cost less. The first is to save the deck some gold, right? It saves two gold, nice. But that's not a very important thing. It's not even a very meaningful thing. The actual, perhaps more important thing to discuss is this is now much more accessible earlier on, unlike chapter one where you don't have any gold. Now all you have to do is go Ali Morrison, Nastroth, Skeleton Warrior, Nastroth, whatever it is. You can now get into this not only a whole slot sooner, but you also just need one less gold card in your hand, which is important because it affects the mulligan. It means that you can be like more generous with the cards you keep. You don't have to like mulligan everything away to make sure you find you know, that one extra gold. You've got your Nastroth and your Ali Morris saying, but you need one more gold, so you have to mulligan all these other really good cards that you'd rather not get rid of, just to just to find what you need to get Nastroth running. You know, creature decks don't have to deal with that. They just have really strong cards. I think a good analogy is that Jad is like this staple in creature decks that's you know, valuable, gives you AP, quite accessible, which is weird to say since that's a 15-7. I guess though with the nerf to Sergeant Slime Toes, it is now less accessible since you can't go Kale, Sergeant Slime Toes, Jad or Sergeant Slime Toes, Count Draenor Jad. So actually that card is now indirectly worse. I guess like, well, it's not a very interesting thing to say. Like anything with health is now indirectly worse because like there's less reach tools, which I'm happy with. But I still think Nastroth needs to cost a gold less. Now I appreciate that this, you know, one gold cost, I think I've summed it up nicely, is not just, oh, it's one cost cheaper now. It's now a lot more accessible as well. And as a result of that, I think maybe you do have to print some kind of drawback on Nastroth. I don't think it should be discard a card, since, like, KGP agent you literally don't have to pay anything for. But maybe it should be, you know, your rival draws a card. And I really like that kind of drawback, since, you know, card games feel a lot more fun when you have more options. You feel like you're doing meaningful decisions, and I think having a big hand is important. If I were designing a card game, I would, I would make card draw. I'd do what Chronicle did. I'd start with massive hand sizes. I play lots of cards per turn, and I'd print draw a card on lots of cards. And you can get away with that in Chronicle, because, you know, card draw is not about resources, it's about options. Whereas in, like, Hearthstone and Magic, you can't just print draw a card on every card because, well, that would be busted. I would argue card advantage is not a term that is applicable to Chronicle. But I think in Chronicle, you can be quite generous with draw a card. So I think Rival draws a card on three cost Nastroth, you know, could be fine. But I, I just wanted to make it three cost and just see what would happen before I made any other changes. But, like, obviously that was on my mind. Alright, next up we have General Grador, which currently is like Virago, and I don't like it. I think this would straight up be a replacement Virago if Virago was taken out of the game. So, like, I do think this needs changing. And what I'm changing it to is more of a proof of concept than it is actually balanced. Add Bandos Chestplate, or Bandos Tassets, or Bandos Warshield to your hand. So... General Grada in RuneScape is this big boss monster, and I think there are other drops, but these three are, like, really sought after. People want those. It's really exciting to get one, and I think that ought to be reflected in Chronicle. As I mentioned, more of a proof of concept, so let's pull the token pile over here. Bandos War Shield. Bandos Tassets. Bandos Chestplate. Right? Bear in mind, you only get one of them, and it's at random. The idea was to make it more exciting, a bit like how Lunar Spellbook is, like, really exciting. I think new players really, really like the spellbooks. Are these cards balanced? I'm, I'm not sure. Bandos Tassets probably is the strongest, just because AP is really valuable. If you got Bandos Tassets every time, it would probably be insane, but you don't. But I think, like, you'd probably be okay with one of these two, and sometimes War Shield will be the best card if you're low on life. Right, the, the balance of the cards is not the most important thing, 
not at the moment anyway. The valuable thing to take away is that, you know, it can be a really exciting ruby. The numbers can be adjusted, hell even the drops could be adjusted, but I think the point is this could be a really exciting, really flavorful ruby. Now do I think these are balanced? I want to have that discussion anyway, because, well, it's me. I think these are very close, if not already balanced. I want to bring up Zolra again. That card, you get 12 gold over two slots if you play both the Zolra and the scales that you get from it, which is about six gold per slot. Well, it's exactly six gold per slot. So you have to do the same for these, right? Bandos Tassets is one and a half base attack over two slots. Well, one and a half per slot. Bandos Chestplate is one AP per slot over two slots, and I guess three armor as well. And Bandos Warshield is half an AP and six armor per slot. I think that given you have to kill a big ol' 1813 creature with no health or armor rewards, you have to wait until the next chapter to play these, and, you know, these will be on your hand, so uh, Scarface Pete could discard them. <laughs> that would really suck. Then yes, I think these are pretty balanced. The only thing I would say is that, you know, Bandos Warshield could be a bit more rewarding on the armor, but I wanted to keep it, like, all the same, right? They all go up by a value of one base attack each, and they all go up by a value of six armor each. But, like, that doesn't have to be the case. Like, Warshield could be more armor rewarding. Maybe even chest plate. Maybe you'd value it seven armor and they go up in seven. Uh, something like that, right? But this is my idea. And we've done something very similar for Kriara, which I will be doing in this video as well. All right, next up, Commander Ziliana. I really like this card. I think it's really strong, and it is already a staple in the uh, gold-based AP decks. The only one that actually exists currently is Raptor with his Amulet of Fury. He's the only guy that has the tools to do it. I guess Vanescular has vampire power, but it's not as consistent because it's just one diamond. But yeah, this is valuable because seven gold is quite a lot, and it's not too punishing since you get healed for a big chunky amount right away. Like, you can three-hit kill this for a, for a net loss of two life, or you can two-hit kill this in the late game for a net heal. And if you do manage to one-hit kill it, which you can summon sometimes do with like a weapon like D-Long or whatever it is, then it's really insanely rewarding and that feels like really great since it's a God Wars boss, I think that's how it should feel. Mind you, it's very, very rare that you'll ever be able to kill it in one hit. But yeah, I don't think all of them need to be like this, they don't all need to have drops. I think Commander Ziliana is already flavorful because 7 gold is exactly what you need to pay for Saradome and Godsword. And even if you don't buy the Saradome and Godsword, it's still like something obvious that's flavorful. You have no right to undress me. Krill to Suroth, the Zamorakian. So back in closed beta, this actually was the card, like the 5-2 weapon, but it was changed. I think people were a bit worried. For those that don't know, uh, Tokash used to let you strike your rival twice, and you did not lose your weapon. So uh, people would use this particular Krill on the left, uh, kill Tokash instantly with the effect, and then strike you twice for 14 damage. Oh, and I think Tokash used to deal 4 damage to both players as well, so it was actually 18 damage. There was this hilarious one-turn kill deck with Skeleton Champion into Snapshot, which costed 0, into Krill, into Tokash, and that would kill you. <laughs> GG, did I lose? Yep. Fun interactive. If I played Calgar, I would have won. No, I wouldn't. Huh. See, that was fun, wasn't it? Enjoyable experience. What a great game. Yeah, I'm and Krill got nerfed around like when that nerf came in, so... But I think it was too much. Like, Tokash certainly needed to be nerfed, and I think Jagex's current version of Tokash is spot on. But, like, for Demon Dex to be... I think Demon Dex need a, a bit more pushing, right? Like, Krill is just seems a bit bad. You kill your next demon, like a black demon, and then, like, you get this 5-1 weapon, and I guess you strike them with the weapon. So it's just 5 damage, really. And if you can kill Krill, then you can certainly kill a black demon. So it seems like there's almost no point. I feel like I might as well not put Krill in the deck and just put in some other card. If I had the room to run Krill, I wouldn't run Krill. I'd run some other strike, like... Lesser demon. I think you could put that in. Like, anything is better than this. So I think, like, the weapon needs to be a bit bigger to kind of, like, you've got, you kill your next demon, so I don't know, black demon, whatever it is. You strike them with 
the five attack weapon and then you still have another five attack weapon to maybe reach into another demon with or maybe you have like a zero cost battle coming up something like that i don't know like the effect kill a demon is is not actually that good because you have to kill a 13 7 and if you can kill a 13 7 why are you not just killing the demon that krill is killing next up we have kriara i don't think i've ever seen kriara played in all of the time that i have played chronicle Actually, I saw it played on stream once. I think Crypt put in his deck for some reason. I've never seen it played against me, though. So, uh, I made it a ruby while Scouser did. He said it should probably be a ruby. Let's bring it in line with all the other God Wars bosses. And let's make it justifiably exciting. Add Amaldi's Judgment to your hand. Well, what is Amaldi's Judgment? Gain temporary attack equal to your total attack. Originally, I had it at gain temporary attack equal to half your total attack, but lots of people were reporting that that was not very good. It was a bit underwhelming. The thing is, though, I am a bit timid of making a card like this just because of how strong it would be, how abusable it would be with strikes. And that's what this is for, right? It's a strike card. And that makes sense, because Kriara is the Amalval boss, and the most sought-after drop from Kriara is the Amadil Godsword. But instead of making it, like, the Immortal God Sword, I made, like, it the special attack. In RuneScape 3, the special attack is called Armadil's Judgment. I believe in Old School RuneScape it's called The Judgment. But either way, it's exactly very similar and flavorful in both. And in RuneScape, it's it's a special attack. Uh, Immortal's Judgment uh, makes your next attack do something like 50% more damage. So I wanted to represent that in Chronicle. And I think it's a card uh, Merchant always used to say he, he really liked the idea of as well. I think that's where the idea came from. We thought of adding a, like a Bandos a special attack card to the Bandos God Wars guy. But I didn't want to do that because I don't want to start mixing drops. Like they both have different roles. Like Bandos seems to be the I'm going to build base attack. And if you suddenly get like the Bandos judgment. Well it wouldn't be called that. But you got the Bandos like special attack. You'd be a bit annoyed because that's not synergizing with your deck. So I didn't want to mix them. And I felt Kriara was appropriate for the strike decks. I can see this being batshit crazy in Weapon Linzer. To be honest, I haven't playtested it. And to be entirely honest, I really don't like Linzer. I... Linzer's my least favorite class, though probably my most played class. I just find like the whole weapon agenda to be a bit dishonest. So I, f I feel like it's just cheesy and... But what can you do? That's the game. She's definitely well designed. Like it's a really like well designed class. I think it's cool, but I think it's like a cheesy playstyle. All of her cards are cool though. Lots of synergies, lots of flavor. But I wanted this to go more in like a, an AP based strike deck. So I guess you could write like lose weapon afterwards. So the effect takes place and then you lose lose your weapon. So you can't like abuse it. But to be honest, I just wanted to put it into our tabletop thing and see what happened first. I just want to make clear also that. The cheesiness is about Weapon Linzer. Like, Grief Linzer, I think, is a cool deck. I think that's much, much less cheesy. All right, let's uh, put this away. Next up, we do have Green Dragon, which I don't want to spoil here. I think I'm going to call it a day because I need to start getting ready for work. And we'll talk about how armor destruction can be fixed next time.